Welcome to Dan ARG YouTube. The Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, don't answer so many questions where many Edo people they ask. For this video where they watch, if you don't want to miss anyone, try watch this video from beginning to the end. The Edo State Governor talk about the things we don't do for Edo State. All the things we don't do for Edo State, he talk for this video. He talk about court killings where they happen for Benin City for Edo State. He talk about Igodalo, the man where everybody they talk say he anoint. He say he no anoint him. If you know, if you want know why, he talk say he no anoint him. Watch the video from beginning to the end. He also talk about the deputy governor Philip Shaibu. He talk about their fight. Before I forget, you see the court killings where they happen for Benin City for Edo State. He say some politicians, they, they among them. He talk on for this video. He say some politicians, they among the people where they push all these court boys, where they kill each other. Make I leave you now. Make you hear from the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki. Enjoy the video. To uh, ask the governor. So I actually came here with a heavy heart. And, and a lot of families are going through a lot because of alleged court-related deaths. On the 24th, the Christmas Eve, 13 persons were gone down. And, you know, the, what is going on, the speculations are that they are court-related deaths. What are we doing about the security architecture of Edo State? Why are we having this problem? Before now, courts were, you know, lobbying associations, pressure groups to fix issues with development and injustice. But it has come Escalated. to a killer squad, so to speak. On rampage. Uh, yes, how are we going to change this narrative? It's ugly. It's dismal. Well, <clears throat> it's, it's really, really sad. Yeah. I mean, and, and sad and disturbing. Um, because like you said, we, in terms of security in the door, that's now the major security issue we have. It's no longer kidnapping. It's no yes. longer armed robbery. Okay. Um, it's now crimes related to you know, cult activities that's focused on a certain segment of our society, the very young, yes. who, you know, are our future. And it's, you know, as a government, it's something we're very worried about, and we've been tracking. So, you know, what you saw in the last few weeks were not totally unexpected. We had intelligence, and we'd been sharing the intelligence with the security agencies. Unfortunately, um, there are some very senior people in government, in politics, that are, cannot dissociate themselves from what has happened. I can't, please. And we are investigating. Okay. And we'll get at them soon. All right. Um, you, you, and it's you know, ahead of the elections, ahead of politics, people are trying to strengthen groups as if, you know, that's what will be required to win elections. So is this politically motivated? It's, it's, a, it's ahead of the politics. Is it just a failure of the other state security network? No, because you see, the other state security network, if you look at we produce results, I mean, uh, on, a, on a monthly basis. So we are tracking activities. So there's intelligence. The network system is picking up intelligence. It's the response. You know, when people say they are gathering together for meetings, for instance, you just can't go and disperse them. So there is, you know, so there's also a re-socialization part of it, where, where you, we now need to get parents, we need to get a larger society involved in a reoriented in no. these young people. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't just gather together and on the instigation of some people begin to kill themselves. In, in the insinuation that uh, kidnapping, armed robberies, they are not on the low, but yeah. this court activities are Precis taking over. Yes. Precisely. I, 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 yes. I, mean, I, I, I think we get solutions to this. We, we're, we're working very, very hard. Okay. We're working extremely hard. I was with the IG you know, two days ago, and it's one of the things I discussed with oh, him. Okay, we're working so. very, very hard. And um, also the drug aspect to it, you know, because this is all, it's also related mm. to drug 
um, availability and drug yes, use. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I'd like to um, come to His Excellency. May I ask you, it appears that the leaves saw the do lights. They're asking the question, and I'm glad that you're here. So I could ask from the horse's mouth, do you have an anointed candidate? Why should I? And if you do, Your no. Excellency, tell us what he's going to be doing differently from what you have done. Or perhaps you want him to leverage on what you have done, just in case you have one. Well, <clears throat> in every interview, even in this interview, mm. if one question that you've asked, and I'm glad you did, was sustainability. Mm. What happens when you leave? All these programs you started, can they be continued? Yes. I guess that's what's on the hearts of most Edolites. And, and that's also of concern to me. So, you know, whoever is going to succeed me has to be somebody who has that understanding and who is also willing to make that sacrifice for it because it's a lot of sacrifice. So you have one already, that's what it means? No, 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 whoever, because you know, in the spectrum, you have, most of the people who are in the race are known to me, very well known to me. Okay. So whoever emerges from the process has to be somebody that can continue with what we've done. So, so it's not about zoning, it's not about it's about the best man coming there, up. There is a process in place. Okay. The two, I mean, there are political parties who will test, you know, what's going on in the state and see where, what advantage, I mean, how they will get an advantage. So Suffice it to say, you don't have an anointed candidate. Oh, I mean, from what you're saying, okay. he does okay, Your Excellency, no, 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 my, 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 my anointed candidate just is a person who can continue That's with what we're doing. Okay, so Your Excellency, yeah. doesn't that make you a godfather against the background that you were against no. a certain godfather no, 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 at some no, no, point no, no, no. in have, your political life. I haven't life. decided. I would say this is the person that is going to be. I haven't presented anybody. But your body language suggests exactly. That. Where is how do you read your body, body language? language. Political your body language. Suggests. How do you yeah, look alike? How, body even. Language. how, yeah, look alike. how do you read political okay. language? Okay. Let me ask this question <laughs> yes. before I leave off this uh, conversation, yes. and that has to do with your relationship with the deputy governor, Philip Schwaibel. Mm -hmm. Have you mended fences I adequately? No, I think it's a strata. It's not a... It's stale? No, no, no. First and foremost, Yes, sir. I ran as... I mean, he ran as my deputy. Mm. And, uh, and my term has not finished. Okay. So I expect my term to finish before we even begin to... Whatever he wants to do, this is, this is business. It, it doesn't require my mending the relationship with him. I am working towards finishing strong and well. He is working towards, you know, uh, going to do part. So, 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 strong so, going into politics. Uh, so, so good governance so, in a you know, so for me, is assured. It's so not for going me, to be. it's like that. I just don't want any distraction. I want okay. to just focus on what we need to do and ensure that we finish strong and finish everything we said we want to do. So but if, and if he decides to spend more of his time, you know, doing other things, that shouldn't distract me. Okay. okay. All right. Let, let's You're not distracted. Let, let's, let's go look at two questions that you need to respond to before our next break. The court, airport, police stations. The Vitoefo Creative Hub will do a letter on your behalf to this establishment and they make sure you get those places to use for your film. And this is what makes your, uh, this is what makes your film. In reality, instead of creating or building a set that will look like an airport or like that will look like a police station, the state government has put agencies on ground that can assist you to get all of this. So tell me as a creative, have you ever had this so good? So I can boastfully tell you that this is Eldorado for creatives in Edo State. My name is Henry Yubo Salegema. I am a thespian, film producer, director, and actor. Yes, Edo State has a good story. Edo Jobs. Some months ago, the governor signed MOUs with prime producers in the country, like Rock TV, African Magic, that their producers should come to this part, Edo State, to start to shoot their movies. And I can tell you, as we speak, over 50 films have been shot here under that memorandum of understanding. And I can tell you personally, I've taken part in over 23 of these films. 
Edo State Creative, I've never had it so good. And I can tell you that Edo State Government supports filmmaking so much that today, if you're a producer and you have come to this part of the state to shoot your movies, our state government will subsidize your hotel rate for you. They will give you transport, like a bus and a Siena, to support your production. If you need what we call special props for productions, like the court, airport, police stations, the Victoria Info Creative Hub will do a letter on your behalf to this establishment and they make sure you get those places to use for your film. And this is what makes your, uh, this is what makes your film a reality. Instead of creating or building a set that will look like an airport or like that will look like a police station, the state government has put agencies on ground that can assist you to get all of this. So tell me as a creative, have you ever had this so good? So I can boastfully tell you that this is Eldorado for creatives in Edo State. My name is Henry Yubo Legema. I am a thespian, film producer, director, and actor. Yes, Edo State has a good story to tell. Very good story to tell. With what Edo State governor Governor, Governor Nogaga Salbazaki has done for the creative. We have never had this so good. Authority, good to have you here. Thank you very much, Sunny Duke. I'm glad you still remember. Absolutely. It's a little bit my good people. <laughs> we also have with us here one of the most outstanding, fantastic broadcaster with a sonorous voice from our sister station, Edo Broadcasting Service. I'd like to thank very specially or you say, Ode, thank you for being a part of this. Yes, indeed. A very beautiful evening to our very amazing viewers, wherever you're watching us from. It's going to be a good time, and I can assure you that the governor is in a very good spirit, and I can see that this party is going to be worth the while. Well, let's begin by um, asking His Excellency to say something to our viewers and listeners from across the world before we really get into the nitty-gritty of this palais. Hi, good evening viewers. It's uh, great to have this palais and I want to thank these wonderful broadcasters who are going to be chatting with me over the next uh, few hours. That done, I would like to observe a minute silence for the departed souls. Uh, of course, a few days ago, we heard the transition of uh, His Excellency, the Governor of Undo State, Rotimi Akero Dolu. And just uh, some few days ago, too, we heard about the transition of former Speaker of the House of Representative, Gali Umar Naba. And in the last couple of days, some citizens of Edo State lost their lives in this unnecessary cult-related clashes that has claimed so many, many lives. We'll take a minute's silence in the Rono right now, right away. And may the souls of the departed continue to rest in the bosom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <coughs> okay, let's, let's get started, Your Excellency. Um, just walk us through what the last seven years has been since you took over in terms of where you met the state, what you've been able to do in terms of impacts, governance, infrastructure, and all the lots and uh, what the challenges have been. Uh, thank you very much, Sonny Duke. Uh, seven years and seven minutes, that's a tough call. <coughs> if, if you recall, when I took over office in 2016, November 2016, 
Nigeria was heading for a recession. The economy was down. Um, the, we were just about in about the same situation we found in ourselves uh, again. Um, but what was particularly disturbing at that time was the sense of hopelessness, particularly among our young people. Um, there was the economy of the state was, you know, rather small. The biggest employer was the civil service. Um, a lot of people didn't see themselves being able to get jobs. You know, it was, we had record unemployment. But what still was the hopelessness which was, which was leading young people to see traveling as the only option? And not just traveling regularly, traveling irregularly and being trafficked. I think, I believe it was in January 2017 or thereabout, when I got the statistics from the International Office on Migration. And at that point, there were almost 30,000 young Edo boys and girls in Libya trying to cross to Europe. So you can imagine how many would have died to get to Libya. And for me, it was very scary and very disturbing. And when we started working on return, their returns, we were able to document them, have data to begin to understand the root causes of the problem. And we found out it was first because we had an economy that was not growing, because we had an educational system that had collapsed. And these kids didn't just have the right education and therefore they just didn't see the pathway to success and employment. And um, we, we just had a, a government structure which was just owned by the people in government who didn't really see their purpose as providing services to the people of the state. So it, against that background, if we now, you know, that's how we came up with our program, our six you know, pillar program, where we now condensed the challenges into six core areas we had to focus on. First, rebuilding in our institutions, particularly government, getting the civil service to work, getting government workers to provide service to our people, rebuilding government institutions. Second was focusing on our people, social development, because you could tell you know, why it's important to, why it was very important to build the infrastructure of government, is that you could dream all you wanted to, you could make all sorts of promises as to what you want to do and how, how you want to solve society's problems. But who will do it? How will it be, how would it be done? That's one area we never focus on as politicians or as citizens. We just talk and then expect that some miracle will happen and what we expect will happen. But not realizing that you've got to ensure that the institutions are there and there are people who day and night work towards providing those promises we have made. Promises for who? Promises for our citizens, that life will be better for our citizens. And how do you do that? Your key is education. And that's, how, that's where the reset button in any society is. A child is born, the child needs to be educated, trained, given certain values, so that that child can be useful to him or herself and society at large. That's why education is important, very key and important. You won't be what you are doing, what you're doing today, if you didn't have those strong um, foundational learning. So we have to fix education, you know, due to healthcare. And, and, and for us, how did we achieve, you know, how, what was the focus? It's not about universities, it's not about certificates. It's about the teacher, ensuring that the teacher is in school, because if the teacher is not in class, that child will not, there will be nobody to teach the child. It's, you know, ensure that you motivate that teacher and you let the teacher know, I mean, work with the teacher on what to do in training that child. It might seem very simple and basic, but it wasn't there and it's not there in most cases. What have we seen in five, six years? Schooling is now fun and particularly public education. And we have almost 400,000 children 
that we have, we, you know, we are affecting today. Kids who, after the first term in primary school, are now able to read and do their sums. Healthcare, ditto. It's not about big hospitals. It's not about centralizing healthcare. You don't need a central healthcare system. You need a decentralized healthcare system so that you can work, you know, and drive less than five minutes to a health facility around you. Because if you have an emergency and you're sick, you don't want to be driving down, you know, 20 miles to one central care place where, you know, you now wait for hours to get care. You should just be able to walk to your neighborhood clinic, your primary health care center, and see, get, make sure that there's somebody there to attend to you, to take your vitals, understand the challenge. Usually, all major diseases start small with some symptoms. Your Excellency, sir, you have um, done a lot in that direction. Yes. Let's go to the specifics. Okay. What have you done recently to ensure that it's a, a, an accomplishment? I don't get it. In terms of education or no, in terms of health care? We're talking about health now. Oh, health care. Yes. As I speak today, in fact, we have almost 50 primary health care centers that have been refurbished. But it's not just about the centers. What we have done that's revolutionary is what you call healthcare financing. Why do people not go to clinics or hospitals? Because they're afraid of payments. They can't pay, they can't pay for card and all that. We have eliminated that. Yes. And come up with our Edo State Health Insurance Program, which is now compulsory. Which means that once you are registered, and you have a crisis and ailment, you can walk into any of those care registered centers, and they could be public or private, to get care. Okay. That, I think, is the revolution here. Has that improved life expectancy in those state? If we were to talk in terms of numbers, if you look at the what, data, what's life expectancy in those state? All the statistics that have been issued by the central authority, by the federal government, shows that Edo has, today ranks amongst the you know, top five, top five states in terms of healthcare provisions, in terms of, you know, um, you know, life expectancy, and all the key um, indicators in the healthcare space. Okay, Your Excellency, I'd like to find out from you. I mean, from the background that you've laid uh, concerning all of the lofty developments that you've wrought in a do state, I'd like to find out from you um, in terms of um, the civil service. You have done so much. Uh, but just recently, I, I remember that a couple of weeks ago, you had announced that you were going to do the 13-month um, salary. And, you know, it was greeted with so much excitement. Uh, but eventually, when that was done, we observed that some people complained that they were not paid uh, the 13-month salary, but they were paid basic. So what exactly happened there? Was there a disparity of some sort, or no, no, it was no. intentional? Don't, don't, yeah, give you first... You have to understand, Edo pays the highest in terms of minimum wage. The thirteenth month salary. It's Forty thousand naira now. Yes, the thirteenth month salary is also to help, you know, improve earnings of civil servants or public servants in these difficult times. And in terms of the payment of the thirteenth month salary, of course, it was based on their basic salary. You know, it was based on the basic, and it was generic for everybody okay. uh, and this is you know so by the time you add your 40,000 with your 13 month salary clearly the Edo State civil servant has uh, earns more than any other civil servant in the country today and I think it's something that you know should be applauded yes. applauded and not she, she talked about it, 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 just a moment she talked about the fact that some people were Excluded? No, nobody from, was from the package. Okay. Nobody was excluded. Okay, so everybody was it's the same captured. Is the same payroll we used? Okay. All right. Let's let's quickly yeah. talk about let's quickly talk about the economy. Yes. Edo State economy. Seven years ago, what was Edo State GDP? Seven years down the line today, where are we in terms of the policies, the programs that you initiated to drive development, drive infrastructure? against the background of where you're coming from, you're interested in how to change the narratives and have a paradigm shift. So where are we? I'll talk about ranking, because this is all relative. About seven years ago, Edo ranked somewhere about 13th, 14th in the country. We were somewhere in the middle, you know, 
terms of GDP ranking. That's the size of your economy. Today, we are clear fifth, you know, between five and six. That means you're not sure. No, 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 no. It's, you know, depending on the indices you use, you know, sometimes, you're, you know, then we're like 14, 15, but today we're like five. Sometimes, you know, using some criteria, we're five, and using other criteria, we're maybe six. But we are top 10 in the country. We're the top, you know, the top, top quarter percentile of, in terms of size of economy and growth. But what is important, it's not just the size today, because there are some economies that are just naturally big in terms of GDP. It's the growth that has occurred since we took over. That is to say, it's from, from say, about you know, 14th, we become like 6th. And we just did, we did that because we were doing, we were undertaking activities, encouraging investments that has added to the economy of the state. Can you put a figure on a new state GDP as we speak? Is it ten million dollars? Is it ten trillion dollars? Is it fourteen trillion dollars? I mean, since are you using dollars or using naira? Okay, let's uh, use let's, what, what let's use. I mean, that's uh, a, that's a, a common denominator. Uh, what, uh, yes. what exchange rate? Yes. I, I think what is important yes. is. Relative to the size of the country, where are we? And how have we grown? I think that's what's important, okay. right? Um, because if you, Nigeria's economy was, how, you know, was 500 and something billion dollars. Um, and if you put it in Naira terms, by the time, you know, it was something, by the time you devalue the Naira, it becomes something. So these are all numbers. Okay. What I think is important is the size relative to the country okay. and what you are doing to improve and increase the amount of economic activities within the state. Okay. So, okay, what are you doing to increase the GDP? What am I, I what are we doing? Economic development. First, accept that the GDP has grown massively. What are we doing? It's people that drive economy and it's also what government does that drive the economy. We have moved from a situation where government wanted to do, what government was used to doing things themselves, owning things themselves, to one where government is encouraging, creating an enabling environment for people to come and do things, go and invest. You now know that if I come to a door, ah, I'm likely to, my business is likely to do well because there's a market, there's security, I feel safe. I feel oh, um, unlike in the past, when I want to buy land, I have 10 people, I'm buying from 10 different people, I don't know who, so I just want to stay away because I don't want that trouble. Now I come to a door, I want to invest, I can you know, get the land, go and search to see if that land is free, pay for it, within 60 days I get my CFO. Um, I, you know, I go to any government office to ask for information, it's you know, I, I get a response. It's not, you know, it's not one of those situations in the past. Like in the past, you just, just remove that because we're fi fixing the institutions. Mm -hmm. We're now beginning to get high trained quality people, you know, in the here who, unlike in the past, they couldn't because they didn't see any opportunities. They were wanted to leave. Um, in the area of just getting around the social life, the cultural life. You know, you can go out, you know, work hours are now extended because you have street lights, nightclubs, cafes, entertainment areas, things about culture. I mean, it's been, Edo State, Edo State is beginning to look like every other normal developing state. Okay, state. Your, your Excellency, I'd like you to um, um, share some light on the revamped uh, Nigerian Observer newspaper. Um, again, just recently when it was announced that, you know, I mean, there's a new one and it was on the, the stand. But afterwards, it appears that we do not see it anymore. Uh, the question I would like to ask you is, don't you think that it is a better time now to ask that uh, for the fact that the online um, edition of, uh, of the Nigerian Observer is now there? One would have thought that, well, we would just allow the Nigerian Observer to bottle up and have um, government documents being printed instead of going to Lagos. What are your thoughts on this? I think part of the general revamp, you know, it's, uh, you know, it was when we came into office in 2016, it was really sad to see all that 
General Lubomidi and his regimes, I mean, regime did these years, that put Edo there as one of the top states in Nigeria. In terms of the media, I mean, the thanks, we have people like you who are living that tradition. We dominated the media. We, we always did. And it's, we still do as Edo Delta people today. And why did that happen and how did it happen? Because of the investment that was made in media houses like The Observer. You had a printing service, you had a publishing service, you had, you know, the radio, uh, you had television. But by the time we came, you could, you know, they just were almost extinct. I mean, they were barely there except on paper. So what we've done with The Observer is to revamp it. So there are now two businesses. You have the printing business with three presses, you know, and you have the publishing business that publishes the Nigerian Observer. And it's like a, every other um, media business. They're looking at the trends. It's easier to just go on social, online, online and, okay. you know, and that's what they are emphasizing. And as far as we're concerned, it's, we are giving it its freedom to do what it needs to do. It's not, even though we are the proprietors, but we don't control its editorial content. Has it been privatized, Your Excellency? Not privatized. Or partial private privatization, uh, we'll ask. Well, you. government still owns okay. all the shares. Okay. But we are partnering with private people, private sector, in terms of some aspects of running them. Okay. So I want to take you up on this uh, rebranded public service. Yes. It's quite a delight when you go to the John Odigye Oyegum Public Service Academy. It has state-of-the-art facilities. It's world class, simply put. Why did you decide to do that? And how are we going to sustain it? Because maintenance culture has always been an issue with us in preserving our institutions and facilities. What are the modalities that you have put in place to ensure that it's enduring, it's an enduring legacy? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, for, before I answer that question, yes, what you are seeing in that building, the Jonas Jodigio Eagle Center, is an outcome of a process. So what we've done as government is to rethink the way government works. First, in terms of its facilities, you know, the government buildings should set the standards. That's why they are more expensive to build. And so we've, and, and then they've got to be built to be efficient, so that the workflow processes are, you know, pretty, pretty seamless. There's a lot of thinking that goes into how things are set up, particularly what you see in terms of the physical structure. But what's even more important is what you don't see in terms of the processes, procedures, and culture. Um, when we came into office, the civil service was broken. And it's not broken in most parts of Nigeria because most governments just don't emphasize, they don't give enough emphasis. You know, the, the public service is taken for granted. You just expect that, you know, people will just come and work and go every day. You're not motiv you don't motivate them. You don't, you know, the, we, you know the, if the environment in which they work is so decrepit, very demotivating. So for us, I, we felt that was the first thing to do. Just restore that sense of dignity, that sense of pride in the public servant. Because these are people who we expect to serve us. They are public servants. And don't treat them like servants. <laughs> Anyone who is going to treat them like servants, please treat them with dignity. Okay. Your Excellency, um, so much has been done or achieved under your leadership with the infrastructures that we see across the state. Uh, there are a lot of innovation. I mean, the Oshama Power Plant is something very novel, which I believe several other states are copying. A whole lot has been done. What would be your reaction to the insinuations in some quarters that in terms of the revenue inflows, whether it's the federal allocation or internally generated revenue, we can't really say it's commensurate with the success story of the state because there's also this insinuation that 
Edo State has never been this indebted compared to what it was in the past. Could you give us figures in that direction? You know, sometimes when you hear the level of ignorance in some reactions, it's so pitiable. I think mean, first thing, you know, in terms of just analyzing your statement, in terms of earnings at the federal, federal receipts, where does Edo rank? What, see all the achievements you have enumerated relative to what we earn. You should be asking, how are you even making this money? How are you able to do this? It's like magic. So tell us. I can't tell you my secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell the next governor. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just hold on. Let's, he's not gone yet. He's not yet. Gone just hold on. Let, let him establish Edo his point. is yeah. not the most indebted state. What has happened is that we are ourselves, Lagos, and you know, who else? Maybe a few other states have a lot of foreign debts. And these foreign debts are World Bank loans. And World Bank just doesn't give money to everybody. You know, you have to meet a certain criteria because the kind of money they give to you is like a 20-year loan with at less than 1%. Right? That's the kind of... The only challenge we have had is because the federal economy has been so badly managed. You can imagine the loan when they gave us... Ten, $100 million 10 years ago. That $100 million, if you look at it in terms of Naira exchange rate today, it's more than doubled. Yeah. Not because of the loan in itself. Not because, uh, no, it's sure. because of the exchange rates. Okay. That is the issue with your know, indebtedness. Okay, I I'd like to come to His Excellency to ask. All right, just, just a moment. We'll go on a quick break. You're still on to the special interactive session, Media Palais, with Edo State Governor, His Excellency Godwin Nogagase Obasiki. We'll be back, and I can tell you for sure we're going to have more barrage of questions for His Excellency, but I'm sure he's equal to the task. Please stay with us. We'll be back with you in a moment. Info Creative Hub will do a letter on your behalf to this establishment and they make sure you get those plays to use for your film. And this is what makes your uh, this is what makes your film a reality. Instead of creating or building a set that will look like an airport or like that will look like a police station, the state government has put agencies on ground that can assist you to get all of this. So tell me as a creative, have you ever had this so good? So I can boastfully tell you that this is Eldorado for creative in Edo State. Glad to have you join us again on this special interactive session with Edo State Governor, His Excellency Godwin Nogegase Obasaki. Uh, a while ago, before that break, we were looking at the issue of the debt profile of Edo State vis-a-vis -vis the earnings and the impact made. I'm sure Your Excellency just want to make a point, uh, say something in that regard as we move on. I, I think the issues with debt, first, the structure of our debt is something that is not, hasn't put any burden on our state finances. Because of the structure, like I said, the terms of the debt, the interest repayment, we are able to meet our debt obligations you know, without any stress. Um, and in terms of the utilization, uh, don't forget that we, we inherited quite a, you know, some of that debt that's been used in terms of infrastructure, like, you know, that is there to see the rain, the storm, must, the, the storm water um, drainage system, for instance, that's drained all of Siloko was part of the money that was raised from the World Bank before my term. But what we, the funding we have received this time around has been largely for education, to strengthen our educational systems, we're going to do best. And the support that most, we, just like most states got as a result of COVID, to strengthen the you know, social fabric of most, um, of most of our states. Okay. So those were basically the loans that we took. So, okay, so, Your so, Excellency, sir, may I ask, um, how feasible is the completion of the shop right? Is it um, going to be abandoned or is it going to see the light of day before you leave? It's complete. Um, what we, what, 
is going on now is just a fit out. Okay. It's fully let. I mean, it's one of, I mean, for me, it was an, it was an amazing success story. That is no, not one shop that's free there. Mr. Oh, Governor, yeah. before she came in with that question, mm -hmm. I was going to have a follow-up question for you on the issue of flooding. Yes. Yeah, they, we still have massive flooding at the Uselu axis, close to Tom Line. It's a perennial problem. We also have now, within the GRE, what are we going to do? How soon are we going to see a difference, a change in the narrative? We have... We're doing a lot that people cannot see. Uh, first, there is a plan, a master plan, that was developed to deflood the state about 10 years ago. Well, it's been on. I mean, even General Obamadia had a plan with some internal drainage. Uh, drainage. We had another 10 years ago, and we are revamping that plan as we speak. The challenge with flooding has largely due to, first, climate change. Mm -hmm. The amount of rainfall we experience in and the length is much higher than ever it was. The second issue is people don't heed into pla to, uh, planning controls, you need to, to uh, the fiscal, uh, con the controls in place for planning the fiscal environment. Most people build without building plans, they build along drainage paths, and they obstruct the flow of water. The last issue has been that of, you know, here again it has to do with developments, just random developments. Take the GRE for instance. When the GRE was planned 78 years ago, there was a lot of green spaces where water could drain to. So the colonial masters didn't see a need to put drains on our roads because once rain fell, you know, there were no ball block, there were no block fences. Water just went into green areas and got absorbed under that. But today, everywhere is built up, most of the time without adequate planning. So we now, like, you know, we now having to, you know, get experts to look at those areas, look at the, 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 the inversions and see how we can now drain. For instance, if you t I'll just give you an example. If you take the golf course road, right, where the Benin Club is, right, um, and you take the moat, right, by the prisons, Okay. The, the, the difference in height between the, the lowest point, which is about the building club, uh, the very building club, is, and the moat is about two meters. Mm. How do you drain? That's an uphill task. Precisely. But there must be a way out. It's not rocket science. So we're it's thinking durable. of those ways out. But you see, there are choices you need to make. Okay. Take Agobasimi, where you have that perennial flood area. area. So, uh, a, there will always be solutions, mm -hmm. but in terms of the cost, should I spend 10 billion naira in providing a drainage solution in that area, or do I use that 10 billion naira to go and plan a new area that will house more people? Okay, Your Excellency, uh, let, let's quickly uh, take you through education, which is one of the major things your administration has given priority attention to. In fact, you said a while ago that most of the loans that have uh, come in, they've been deployed into education. Um, for, for a while, we heard so much about Edelbest 1.0, 2.0, but in recent time, it looks like that has been at the background. Then secondly, several of the high institutions in Edo State, um, there's one crisis or the other. College of Agriculture, Igorahi, was booming, according to some people, until you can in, and the story is different because Many students who went to that school couldn't graduate, they couldn't complete their education, lecturers displaced, staff displaced, and then we we'll go to College of Education at Kiadolo as we speak. Many of the workers are still complaining to tomorrow. And then the first state-owned university in Nigeria, AAU, is in one crisis or the other. And many of the people there are saying, it's when you came on board, all of these crises came up. What's your take on this? Um, there are too many questions, so which do you want me to take first? Okay. Do best. Um, for us, education is it. As a minority, we are who we are, what we are, because of the number, you know, and the quality of education that we receive. I mean, we have it. I do. And that's what has placed us in so many places uh, of importance locally and globally. 
So, we haven't forgotten our band on the device. We've finished that stage. We've, we've revamped our basic education system. So we go to the next level, the next problem. The next problem is mid, middle level education, right? So EduBest 1.0 was focused on primary one to six. Now we're in our fifth year, so the teachers know what to do. They know how to monitor the outcomes. The children are doing well, and we're happy. What's the next level? They're going to go into junior school, right? You know, just as one to three. When we then found that, that actually basic education, what the constitution says about basic education is that it's actually from primary one to JSS three, which means that once the child comes into your custody as government at the age of six, you don't release that child until that child is about fifteen. But that was not the case. I mean, you know. So what you had was you still had secondary schools that was made up of junior and senior. The junior schools are under the governance of SUBEB. The senior schools are supposed to be under the governance of the state. So you can see the confusion and the mix. And we've now realized, you know, you don't see, don't see that, the drop-off ratio between when a child finished primary six and SS1 is 50%. So if you have a class of 100 children who did primary one to six, by the time you are looking for them in SS1, half of them are gone. That's what you see on the streets. As drive, as Alaya boys, those guys were hanging out in the back. So the policy that was enunciated, the, the revamped education policy was never followed through. And the do best has brought it out for us. So our next phase is to now make sure that we now disarticulate these junior schools from the senior schools so that you have a proper basic education system. So by the time that child is 15, if the child doesn't even have an opportunity to further education, how is our education in life? You have all the skills, you have the basic education, you have the life skills to go ahead with your life. Okay. All right, you're yeah. to he, he hasn't talked, yeah, yes. he's not sure yet. Yeah. Mm. Then, so you talk about higher education. And when I hear people talk about schools that were functioning, it's a disaster. I mean, I, didn't, I just wonder, when did we get so low? When, you know, this was not the Edo I was born in. You talked about College of Agriculture. You wouldn't even send your house help, your, your servant, your house help. You wouldn't send them to that kind of school. The pictures are all there. And I'm ashamed that people talk about having to be associated with such decrepit schools. It just, you know, it's not, you don't play politics with education. I mean, let's even look at the statistics. By the time I came in, how many of these people could even get jobs? What's the quality of the education, the, grad, the, the, the degrees today being given by AAU compared to what it was 10, 20 years ago? Why are the teachers in that school not sending their children to that school and sending them to other schools abroad or private schools? Why? If the schools were that great, then what are we talking about? Here. Yeah. Uh, so funding, what has happened? Funding is, what a, is a key what challenge. It yeah. cannot be funded. It is a key challenge. No, Since you came on board, it's not funding. Your, your subvention to the school has not reduced it's, drastically. It's, according to the, it's, not, yeah, fun, it's yeah. not funding. So what is, what is, is why is there why is there constant crisis? Because there's not a crisis because cabals, people have taken over these schools, and nobody's been questioning, and then they they are not accountable to who. How? When, when you say they have taken over the when school? You, when you, you, are, you, are, you are in charge of a school, yes. your purpose is to graduate, provide quality education to people, mm -hmm. right? You have more than 3,000 or, I mean, 30,000 people you said have, have registered in that school. You collect fees from them. What do you use them for? What do you use the schools for? The fees for? How come private schools are doing well and you are not, you are not doing as well? So, so, I mean, yeah, what I'm saying is, we, you know, we've got, university education has gotten to a crisis point in Nigeria today. We tested, we set up another state university. In the last couple of weeks, right? we've seen videos university. that are not reflective of the enormous work that have been done in Edo since 2017. Our administration okay. met with a large inventory of elected schools, outdated teaching methods, poor work culture, high teacher activism, and minimal parental involvement. In schools. This is why the adult basic education. Interestingly, 
I have a practical example to, to say. Somewhere around in the GRA, some people reported that they were asked to pay as high as 9 million naira to install their transformer and do the connection. One would wonder, I mean, would those people not stay put at the BCD instead of B going B at the BDC, BDC okay. as opposed to, um, you know, settling for Oshomo with the intent that it should have been better, it should have been cheaper, and it should have been more accessible to Why them. is Oshomo so more expensive? I'd like to find out from you, why is it this expensive if it was intended to make the people's lives a lot easier? Well, I think for us in Edo, the we've just found ourselves in a very advantaged position that we're the cheapest source of generating electricity. That's why we're able to do the Azura deal. Because, because we have gas, we have a lot of onshore gas, and there's a transmission network that comes that has a core in Edo. In the case, that experience led us to attracting other investors like Osiomo to come into the space. The challenge with electricity is about competition. You can either generate through, you know, get electricity from a public utility like BDC or a private IPP like Osiomo or your own generator. And each of this, you know, electricity generated from each of the sources has a different cost. So it's up to you to now decide. But what we have done in Edo is to make it available. So what, so what you are saying, available, what you're so saying... So it's available. You are saying one is too expensive. Yes. Okay. Is it really true? Because yes, because, because the gas price to generate for someone is $6. And they charge in dollars. The federal government charges in dollars. Where are they are negotiating to try and see if they can get cheaper gas. I mean, and that is the contradiction of Nigeria. Here we are in a door with a lot of gas, most of it being fled. Everyone Yet, and ironically, we can't get it to buy. Very sad. That's oh. it. All right, Your Excellency. Um, <laughs> Let's talk quite, about quite, quite uh, interesting security. Uh, some please. Of the, you know, we'll get there in a moment. Yeah. Um, when you came on board, there were certain pseudo names that were given to you. Number one was We Can See. Hmm. And then another one came somewhere along the line, which has to do with MOU governor. Uh, the MOUs, where are we with them? Or are they just the hanging in the air as MOUs or we have things we can point to, touchable, feelable things that have been done? For example, the Gele Gele seaport is there. Even the road leading to that area is still, there's a huge question mark on it. And several of these things, yeah. Okay. Um, first, what is MOU? What does that mean? It memorandum means of understanding. A memorandum of understanding. Mm. Just, and, go on. Yeah. Just go on. And um, you, if you want to diversify your economy, you are moving your state from a public service driven economy to a private sector one. The first thing you do when you are talking to a private sector a person or an investor is to have an understanding with that person. So you sign a memorandum which spells out what you want to achieve. And I, I, when I campaigned... I Today, I, I stand before you to shed light on an issue. We went to state into a private sector one. So we signed MOU with, for Siomo, at least you have power. We signed MOU for the refinery. You have the refinery. We signed MOU for you know, the oil palm investors, the oil palm investors. You have those investors in. We signed MOU for the mall. You have it in. We signed them. So, is MOU working? So you are truly an MOU governor. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the issue of the uh, vacancy because uh, I remember when we were asking to come back for the second time. I was one of those who asked you or who commended you rather about the vacancy uh, infrastructure uh, uh, program or agenda. But down the line, we have seen that you have lost steam. The zest is no longer there. The ghost to and fervor yes. you came up with in fixing the roads. <laughs> no, that's, that's what the people are saying. Society yes. watchers are yes. saying that, yes. and we are seeing it. Yes. It's like we are hedged in. Okay. Socially, we're impaired. Okay. Economically, we're impaired. Traveling out to do business, it's, 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 it's become a problem because of the bad roads. Okay. So, well... 
Um, in terms of the issue of execution, building roads, no government has built, um, I mean, has built as many roads or in terms of length of roads as we have in, it, in, this, in the life of this administration in the last seven years. You see, the way can see acronym came about because we were fixing and working on our own internal roads. So you wake up in the morning and you see the road leading to your house being done. And we're still doing that and we're doing a lot more of that. What we have not been able to do is to fix the major trunk roads because of the unique location of a door. Okay. Today, all you know, all the major trunks, federal trunks, come through here. So Uselu, Bawa Uselu Road to the Ring Road is a federal road. Akpakwava, a federal road. Sapale Road, a federal road. You know, a, so we are hemmed around and we can't do anything about these roads because first they've all been contracted out to uh, you know contractors okay. we are not even if we went there to do it ourselves possibly do it we cannot be so repaid our hands, are tied. our hands are tied because of so what should but, have been but an but advantage but the federal government has been repaying states who no on no no roads. no yes. no they, they, they go, go, go to check on if you recall an incident in Port Harcourt, yes. even when the new president came in, he told the governor straight away, no, federal government is not going to. Is the federal government owing me on then, any road project? The federal, federal government is not owing me on okay. uh, Rivers State was paid huge sums of money. No, check. It was the same. <laughs> well, he said the federal government does not refund states or stop refunding states on doing anything about okay, the Okay, we're, we're due for another break. Mm -hmm. uh, many thanks again for joining this broadcast of the special interactive session with His Excellency Godwin Nogega Selbaski, the State Governor. We will take a break now. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Today, I stand before you to shed light on an issue that significantly impacts the progress and development of our beloved state, Edo. The road infrastructure across our state has been a subject of concern and discussion for far too long. But today, I'm proud to announce that our government has taken significant steps to address this crucial issue, and we have witnessed remarkable progress in improving our road network. Over the past few years, the government of Edo State recognized the importance of well-developed road infrastructure system. We understood that good roads are the foundation upon which economic and social progress is built. As a result, we have invested our efforts and resources in constructing a remarkable 730 kilometers of inner city and interstate roads across Edo State. The impact of this intervention cannot be overstated. By constructing these roads, we have not only connected various communities, but we have also provided a platform to facilitate seamless movement, thus allowing businesses to thrive. When commerce flourishes, economic growth prosperity follows. 
The improved road infrastructure has affected both local and foreign investors who now view Edo State as a viable destination to establish and expand their businesses. This influx of investment and economic activities has led to the creation of employment opportunities for our citizens and a rise in our state's overall revenue. Furthermore, it is crucial to acknowledge that the federal rules within our states have suffered from negligence and insufficient maintenance. Despite the fact that this responsibility for these rules lie with the federal government, we understand that their condition directly affects our state and its residents. Thus, we cannot simply turn a blind eye to the struggles faced by our people. Therefore, as a responsible and responsive government, we have taken it upon ourselves to undertake remedial repairs of federal rules, even though legally it's not within our purview. We are not shying away from our responsibility and we refuse to let the deteriorating state of federal rules hinder our progress. Our commitment to the welfare of our people is unwavering. We understand the impact your robust road network has on the daily lives of our citizens and we are committed to ensuring that every resident of Edo State enjoys the benefit of improved road infrastructure. Our intervention in the road infrastructure of Edo State has been nothing short of transformational. Our commitment to constructing 730 kilos of road demonstrates our dedication to progress and development. By investing in our road network, we have boosted commerce, stimulated economic growth, and reaped the rewards of a thriving society. We may not be where we want to be, however, we are certainly not where we used to be. On road infrastructure and network, we have a good story to tell. In the last couple of weeks, we have seen videos that are not reflective of the enormous work that have been done in Edo since 2017. Our administration met a large inventory of dilapidated schools, outdated teaching methods, poor work culture, high teacher aptitism, and minimal parental involvement in schools. This is why the Edo basic education sector transit, and as needed, we have also done began a process of relocating learners in schools that are inhabitable. However, many communities kicked against this. But since 2021, when the governor gave marching orders for dilapidated structures to be demolished across the state, efforts were redoubled on demolishing and remodeling of such schools. To address the lack of amenities in schools, we introduced playgrounds, sporting facilities, and replaced With us in this special interactive session with Edo State Governor Gordon Nogase Obaseki. We'll move on to this segment before our next break. We'll be having a uh, continuation of this conversation and then we'll have the pigeon segment of this discussion. But let me let me get you started off on this uh, segment. Uh, let's let's have uh, Madam Meze Gabor uh, you know, take us so, through. Okay. Yes, I, yeah. I, I'd like to uh, ask the Governor so I actually came here with a heavy heart and, and a lot of families are going through a lot because of alleged cut related deaths. On the 24th, the Christmas Eve, 13 persons were gone down. And you know, the, what is going on, the speculations are that they are cut related deaths. What are we doing about the security architecture of Edo State? Why are we having this problem? Before now, courts were, you know, lobbying associations, pressure groups to fix issues with development and injustice. But it has come Escalated. to a killer squad, so to speak. On rampage. Uh, yes, how are we going to change this narrative? It's ugly. It's dismal. Well, <clears throat> it's, it's really, really sad. Yeah. I mean, and, and sad and disturbing. Um, because like you said, we, in terms of security in Edo, that's now the major security issue we have. 
It's no longer kidnapping. It's no yes. longer armed robbery. Um, it's now crimes related to you know, cult activities that's focused on a certain segment of our society, the very young, yes. who you know are our future. And it's you know as a government, it's something we're very worried about, and we've been tracking. So you know what you saw in the last few weeks were not totally unexpected. We had intelligence, and we'd been sharing the intelligence with the security agencies. Unfortunately. Um, there are some very senior people in government, in politics, that ah, cannot dissociate themselves from what has happened. I come, please. And we are investigating. Okay. And we'll get at them soon. All right. Um, <laughs> you, you, and it's you know, ahead of the elections, ahead of politics. People are trying to strengthen groups as if, you know, that's what will be required to win elections. So is this politically motivated? It's, a, it's ahead of the politics. Is it a failure of the Ado State Security Network? No, because you see, the Ado State Security Network, if you look at we produce results, I mean, uh, records on a, on a monthly basis. So we are tracking activities. So there's intelligence. The network system is picking up intelligence. It's the response. You know, when people say they are gathering together for meetings, for instance, you just can't go and disperse them. So there is, you know, so there's also a re-socialization part of it, where, where you, we now need to get parents, we need to get a larger society involved in reorienting in no. these young people. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't just gather together and on the instigation of some people begin to kill themselves. So in the insinuation that uh, kidnapping, armed robberies, they are not on the low, but yeah. these court activities are taking over. Yes. Precisely. I, I, yes. I, I, and, and, I pray we get solutions to this. We are, we're, we're working very, very hard. Okay. We're working extremely hard. I was with the IG you know, two days ago, and it's one of the things I discussed with oh, him. Okay. We're working very, very hard. And um, also the drug aspect to it, you know, because this is all, it's also related mm. to drug uh, availability and drug yes, use. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I'd like to um, come to His Excellency. May I ask you, it appears that the Libs of the Dolites, they're asking the question, and I'm glad that you're here, so I could ask from the horse's mouth, do you have an anointed candidate? Why should I? And if you do, Your no. Excellency, tell us what he's going to be doing differently from what you have done, or perhaps you want him to leverage on what you have done, just in case you have one. Well, in every interview, even in this interview, the one question that you asked, and I'm glad you did, was sustainability. What happens when you leave? All these programs you started, can they be continued? Yes. I guess that's what's on the hearts of most Edolites. And, and that's also of concern to me. So, you know, whoever is going to succeed me has to be somebody who has that understanding and who is also willing to make that sacrifice for it because it's a lot of sacrifice. So you have okay. one already, that's what it means? No, 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 whoever, because you know, in the spectrum, you have, you know, most of the people who are in the race are known to me, very well known to me. Okay. So whoever emerges from the process has to be somebody that can continue with what we've done. So, so it's not about zoning, it's not about, it's about the best man there, coming up. There is a process in place. Okay. The two, I mean, there are political parties who will test, you know, what's going on in the state and see where, what advantage, I mean, how they will get an advantage. Suffice it to say, you don't have an anointed candidate. Uh, I mean, from uh, what you're saying, okay. does have. Okay, your excellency, my excellency, my anointed candidate the just is the person who can continue with what we're doing. Okay, so your excellency, doesn't that make you a godfather? It gets the background that you were against no. Is setting Godfather no, 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 at some no, no, point no, no, no. in I, your political I haven't life. Decided, I haven't said this is the person that is going to be. I haven't presented anybody. But your body language suggests exactly. that. Exactly. Where is? How do you read your body language? language. Political your body language suggests that. You look alike. How do you, yeah, how do you, like you, you, how do you read political language? Okay. language? Let, let me ask this question <laughs> yes. before I leave off this uh, conversation. Yes. And that has to do with your relationship with the Deputy Governor, Philip Schweibo. Have you mended fences I adequately? No, I think it's, it's rather, it's not a... It's stale? No, no, no. First and foremost, yes, sir? I ran as, I mean, he ran as my deputy. Mm. And, uh, and my term has not finished. 
Okay. So I expect my term to finish before we even begin to... Whatever he wants to do, this is, this is business. It, it doesn't require my mending the relationship with him. I am working towards finishing strong as well. He is working towards... You know, uh, going to go so I'm so, strong so, going into politics. So, so good governance so, in a good know, so state me, is assured. It's so not for me, going to be. it's like that. I just don't want any distraction. I want okay. to just focus on what we need to do and ensure that we finish strong and finish everything we said we would. So, but if and um, if he decides to enough. spend more of his time, you know, doing other things, mm -hmm. I shouldn't distract me. Okay. All right. Let, let's You're not quickly, distracted. Let's let's go look at two questions that you need to respond to before our next break. Uh, walk us through uh, the state of internal generator revenue in the last seven years, yeah. and the Benin City Mall. What is the state of the mall? I know you responded to that, but we would like to know what is the level of investment by the state government. Well, first let's talk about internal revenues. When we got in in twenty sixteen, seventeen seventeen. We're inching towards a two billion naira monthly IGR. That was today. We're inching towards five billion a month. In some cases, two five, but it's between four and five. Um, but what's important for us is to broaden the tax bracket so that the tax burden IGR is not just on a few people, because everybody who is earning income, who is you mm -hmm. know, should pay something. It's true. Yeah, and we see, uh, you know, that it's going to increase significantly as we introduce more technology and more efficient ways to collect taxes. Um, Our goal is to ensure that the amount of tax we raise locally, I, I, IGR, exceeds what we get from Abuja. That's okay. the way. That's the one way to ensure our sustainability into the future. Okay. So even if we don't get revenues from Abuja, we can continue to run it. Okay. And you're doing that successfully. We're working towards that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take another break and uh, we'll be back shortly to continue with this conversation with His Excellency on this special interactive session. This is the point Stay with us. Stay with us. Of course, this is the, this is the <laughs> point. Yeah, this is the point. <laughs> Uh, Madam Ameze Gebo will be we'll taking, taking a leave. Yeah. Yeah. I would truly, truly treasure yeah. this moment. Okay, personally, I treasure this moment. Your Excellency, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 We'll take a break now. We'll be back with you in a moment. My name is Kingsley Uwagbali, and I'm the Honorable Commissioner for Public Safety and Security at those states. A few days ago, we launched our command and control center after we had a summit to discuss the issue of security for Edo State. We know that Edo State is safe and secure, and this has to do with the amount of resources and investments the state has done under His Excellency Gordon Obaseki. As we speak, you can call 112, you can call 739 if you have any kind of emergency and will respond. As we speak, we have activated our security measures for the Christmas season. You will begin to see plainclothes policemen on the streets of Edo State. As we speak, I can also say that there has been a huge level of collaboration between the various agencies of government. One of the things we have achieved is that we have all agencies of government working together and that has helped us. And more importantly, we believe security is local. So we are training well over 6,500 vigilantes already. We are going to train more. We are even beginning to train there now along the various centurial zones. All right. So why are we doing that? We believe that uh, when there are issues in your community, they should be able to respond first. The police will support them. And if we have to bring in the military, we'll bring in the military. If you see most of our roads now, some part you see military, some part you see the police, some part you even see NDLE. Security is local and you all have a role to play in security. Sometimes the way we drive on our streets, on our roads, it's a bit unacceptable. We are reckless, we don't want to obey the rules. These are the things that encourage uh, bad behavior. So we do expect all of those people to drive properly. If you have any information, even about bad driving, please call 112739. You see any wrong movement around your environment, something you're not familiar with, you see human beings that you're not sure who they are, please call 112739. We have men and women who will respond to you 
immediately don't say it doesn't matter i can say something here quickly the first one hour after every kidnap is very important because then they are moving the victims from where they to their own location if you call us at that time we're able to activate even up to hunters up to vigilantes up to police to rescue the persons all right so please help us as we help you to ensure we have a safe and happy Utah season. I'd like to assure every Edo person that the investment we have made in security is huge and not just huge, both in human equipment and in resources. And they have all been geared to ensure that Edo are not only safe, they can go about and enjoy the Utah. At the end of the day, we do have a good state to tell in Edo State. Thank you very much. My name is Henry Yubo Legema. I am a thespian, film producer, director, and actor. Yes, Edo State has a good story to tell, very good story to tell. With what Edo State Governor, Governor, Governor Nogaga Salbazaki has done for the creative, we have never had it so good. Look at what is happening at the Victoria Full Creative Hub, Edo Jobs. Some months ago, the governor signed MOUs with prime producers in the country, like Rock TV, African Magic, that their producers should come to this path, Edo State. With us on this special interactive session with Edo State Governor, from wherever you're watching us, many thanks again for staying with us. Your Excellency, thank you so much for this opportunity to have this interface with okay. you. I'd like to get started by uh, asking you to respond to uh, the key impact that has been made in the health sector, which is very, very key. Uh, health is very synonymous with the quality of life and all of that. In terms of the numbers, in terms of primary health care center, in terms of life expectancy and all of that, like a wrap. Thank you. <clears throat> I, I think for us, health care um, is an indicator of the level of development of any society or community. And so we take it very, very seriously. And what we have done is look at healthcare from four aspects. First, healthcare is not the physical infrastructure. Healthcare is the quality of service, service you give to people. And so you have to focus on the people who provide the care and ensure that they provide quality care. So manpower training is very, very important. That's why we rebuilt the nursing school. That's why we are rebuilding the School of Medical Health Technology, because these are the people that will provide support, that will provide the services in these facilities. The second thing we have done is to focus on financing, because people have, why, you know, we, the healthcare system broke down, was because we left the whole burden of financing healthcare to government alone. So, so healthcare financing is important. Now that we have a health insurance, where you can just put something aside, right? even if it's 50 naira a day, 100 naira a day, the day you are unfortunate to fall ill, you walk, can walk into any center and get, get care. And now we're ensuring that that's, those centers provide you quality care. It's not like you go in there or you have uh, you know, an ailment, you, you can't pay for the surgery, or even if it's just um, medical uh, medications, medicines, you go, they say it's out of stock. No, that's history, right? Okay. And then, <clears throat> then, then, then and lastly, the physical infrastructure to make sure, you know, it's one, way, one place you want to go to, not like what I saw in the facility, uh, the central hospital, where I went there, they say it's a wellness, wellness center. And, you know, and looking at that center, you know that you'll fall ill if you just go in there. <laughs> Well, you've taken okay, yeah, <laughs> yes, I'd like to, to do a follow-up to this um, health issue. Uh, for me, um, Edo Health Insurance is amazingly uh, one of the best things that your administration has done, especially looking at the fact that it has attended to health issues uh, that Edo Lights would not have ordinarily gone to the hospital for, but Edo Health Insurance has made all that easy. But I'm particularly worried about the, the, the Stella Bass Angel Hospital. Four years ago, I gave birth to my baby there. Uh, but tell us exactly, what is the state of Stella Bass Angel Hospital? Is it just going to be known as a COVID center? Or you have a better plan for it? Just wait and see in May. Oh, I see that. <laughs> Interesting. 
Okay, we'll All find right. out in the coming right. days. Thank, thank you very much. Of course, our viewers would have noticed that uh, there's a new entrant into the panelist. Nosa Idelogbedi is the head of station TMC TV radio broadcast. Many thanks for joining us, and he will be leveraging on this conversation with the Pidgin language. Nosa, take it away with your first show. Well, Sonny Duke, thank you very much for your me on this place. Make I turn out with Mr. Governor to give us some questions we'll be saying we'll respond to Nosa and our friendly governor. Okay. We will begin there. And before we begin the Kariwaka, the Chukai, for those questions, I said we can ask Mr. Governor, for the past seven years, mm. some of your policy or programs we you put for granted, you don't get any regrets. Um, for the one when I do myself, I don't get regret Because there's nothing when I do, when I don't think about it. Anything when we do for our government, you know, so we know they talk plenty. We they think more than we they talk. So, now education, no. We think well, well, before we do all the things we do for the best. We think about the picking when they go to school. You know, be people when get money, now con we are concerned to us because now they pay, pay for private school. Now, people when not get money, person, my mom went to sell for markets, the for Kanaiza, means it because you know, get that kind of money in picking or get good education. We think about, you know, uh, the roads. People they complain road road. We have more politics, so we are the the bit person for for friends where they not commit. Eh? The one when I do when they give me we can see. I still you know we we, we still they do one. The thing we say one government alone nothing do everything. Right. So for the one when we say we go do we don't do and reach our power. Now I like, say make we put everything when we don't do together for ground. So the person when will come after me. We say, okay, this now where it stop. He do this road for this area, I never do this one. So make it, maybe it go now focus, go say, okay, this time make him do the one when they never do. And uh, he starts this uh, healthcare. Okay, maybe now, now, now like 250,000 people now don't register. Maybe we will take out to 1 million, 2 million. You know? But at least not to say, oh, we're not going to do this one again. So you don't get anything when I start, when bad like that, say, oh, it cost pain after I leave. Um, because I regret and say, okay, no, no, make, we, maybe we, we, you know, we're not supposed to do what we do. I don't think, say, when I think, I don't see anyone when I no regret. regret at all. No regret at all. Okay, make we took out for one direction. We we'll said the Ogmo get this where you don't put for ground. We don't see different infrastructures where you don't put for ground for the past seven years. Earth matter, education matter, all the matter for everywhere. Mm. So let me ask you this question. Mm. People when they are care for you. People with the Eho, mm. Obada, mm. Idibo, mm. Udeni, mm. Ebui. Mm. All these people mm. with the farm, we know the two con city. Mm. How they feel take no say or year or they benefit from this obogetis we don't we don't put for granted. How you feel okay. say they don't Okay, they don't. two things. One, we say, you know, one thing when the mo most important for this world today, now, nah, internet and connectivity. Because as it day now, person will not get phone at least in our day. We will count people will not get phone. We don't make sure say one infra infrastructure when a door with a bill for the way many states never even start now this fiber, so that every village. Every, now every local government we know we get fiber when go. When we say if you feel take your phone, you don't need to buy data. Eh? You get Wi-Fi, you go, they see what thing will they do and what thing they happen. So you be farmer now. You did farm cassava. Hmm? You don't reach harvest time. You won't say, okay, half how, how much I feel sell this my cassava? I did my turn. You just go say, okay, who they buy cassava for a do today? Oh, you get one uh, ethanol plant for Lobo. How much be transport? You go check. Okay, make a book. So maybe I will sell my food stock from my house. I don't need to work at Karam Corn Market. You know, you get some people self. I think my wife that you get a uh, customer. Uh, one woman when they sell dry fish for her. When he gets good fine stock and uh, Otien, this uh, cherry. <laughs> Ah, Mama, I get fine, fine cereal. Uh, you know, two cost. Uh, this one nice. You go say, ah, okay. Show him from. Send me the picture. Make I see. 
go strong. So the picture. He goes, okay, how how much? We tell him, like, I order. So with technology, when we put in place, we go now make we just do penetration, make it the enter the villages, the enter every part of Edo, so that we can connect people, connect them to market, connect them to their people abroad. That now how our economy will grow. We can I can that question again. We could put like for Gile Gile side and music. <laughs> Gile Gile Olubo. Because I hear today, say you want to visit that area. And I believe say you don't go play for there. You go see something. Mm -hmm. And you go tell us what you see for there. <laughs> three three things. One, about a month and a half ago, they can't tell me. Very sad. Sad. See, them, some people, they be go markets or something. Eh? As in, they go, then boats, when they, they come capsize. Mm -hmm. Some children can't die inside because they don't feel swim to shore. So now can they make me think, say, ah, these people, they be cities, no. Okay, they own, we, they put, they put buses. Bus day, took it, took it day, with the Central Park, with the... They enjoy for with they do, but these people when now what are they, they take move? How will they care for get up for them? So I don't think oh, I don't order some you know, they talk to some people when they make big boats to say how if you do passenger boats for them. So at least boat could come on for Lubo. Still stop for a jockey from a jockey, go to a biama, go from you know, that waka sweet. that's that you know. Sweet. So at least they feed the waka and in a safe way. Today now when I go, I can one market. Can't see as the plenty for it. If they look, if one big boat come now, all those small can off just outside. But so that's not the first reason why I go to say, okay, if we want to introduce transport, where be the hubs? Make us see how the water be. The second we say, I can't get some investors when we don't talk about this area where they fit where opportunity. They say going gas there. I say I know say that they do many uh this thing for exploration for that site. I know at least two companies, one near Jockey and one for Gile Gile. So we can make we enter, but make I go, make I go see myself. Which did they do, you know, some they fled the gas. I say maybe opportunity, they make we even go see how we can work with them. Work with them. Make we get the gas stick they use for manufacturing and electricity. The other reason, now, I go uh, Nicaragua. Because you know, say in the Kwa, Bengi problem early in the year. Now, so you know, say and there will come day. Many criminals enter that place. That's what they, they caught three. Some of those, those uh, three for that because I don't did there for thousands of years. They go catch the three, put them for water, float them to market. Then when they sell, you know, you can imagine all the investment that they saw. Eh? We just enter the forest, cut the tree, the forest, carry the log, go. Sell the log, buy arms, come to use and terrorize the people for the place. So when I go there eight months ago, I look at me, ah, I say, okay, I promise them, say, I'll go do something about her. So I, with soldier, with police, with the National Guard, we pursue all of them. We pursue them, pursue them. Thank God many of them don't run. If you still there one day, when would they look for you? Get one member of the federal house when they protect them, but we go catch them. Huh? So I go there today just to go see the people, make sure, say, you know, what I promise them, I don't fulfill. And to also look for the area where we feel put jetty. Because if we do this transport service, we get to build jetty yes. for these places. And also build police posts so that we can secure them. Okay. Let's, let's just walk you through some uh, questions that are coming in. Uh, your effort to transform Edo State from being a civil servant state to an industrial state, I believe, is yielding result. Well, let us into the expected impact of the ethanol plant, the modular refinery, and the ESO program in Edo State? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think particularly the ethanol plant and the ESO program, what, is, what it signifies is that we're starting the process of industrialization using agricultural raw materials. So today, with the ethanol plants, based on the use of cassava you can farm as much cassava in the state because you have a market the ethanol plant produces ethanol alcohol for industrial uses 
and also for breweries, I mean for drinks manufacturers. So you can see the relationship between agriculture and industrialization. Ditto the oil palm program. I mean, Edo is the home of oil palm. That's what we're known for. You know, the Malaysians were here to work with uh, researchers in NIFO 60 years ago. So, but if you see what Malaysia, Indonesia, and all those Costa Rica and those countries have done with oil palm, in fact, oil palm was the main catalyst for the Malaysian Revolution, Industrial Revolution. So, with what we have done now, just streamlining the process and getting people to come and invest, because with the phase one alone will bring in more than half a billion dollars of investments. So, when they produce palm, what happens? Right? They are not going to export because the demand is so much. In fact, we import crude palm oil into Nigeria today as we speak. A lot. And that's what you need for pharmaceuticals. By the time you refine and process it, for pharmaceuticals, for cosmetics, for, you know, you know but palm oil is the most prolific edible fat. Okay. Just, just before we take more questions, I'd like to react to two uh, issues. Number one. Uh, for the past six months, there's a talk around the judiciary that there are some high court judges that we have this one, despite the recommendation by the NGC. What are you doing with the Edo State Diaspora Commission? Edo State has a huge diaspora, diaspora inflow in terms of revenue. Quickly, sir. Okay, there are two questions. Yes. The judiciary and the diaspora. Yes. I think with the judiciary, you know, um, I cannot see something wrong and not point it out. Um, the lords, the NGC, you know, uh, uh, okay. confirmed some appointments, and by the time we saw the, you know, the, the we then, by the time the, 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 the we received the appointments, there were lots of petitions that came on some, you know, regarding some of them, some of the appointees. For instance, issues about one somebody who had was on a probation. <laughs> For instance. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just, come to yeah, yeah, come precisely. And I'm saying, look, where well, there's thanks to the move to clean up the judiciary, to make it, you know, make it, and you, you see, they give it to the Edo judiciary. In all what's going on, the, the Edo judiciary, the judiciary has always stood out. And I think it's important, it's not in my time that I will sit and see something that is and wrong regrets, um, and regret. Is any and, time and, for them to be sworn in? No, no, I couldn't. So, we have, so I have had to refer back to the Nigerian Judicial Commission to review some of these, you know, uh, petitions we've seen. Okay. And even their wisdom, they think it's still, it's not, you know, it's, yeah. you know strong enough okay. to, to correct the situation. Well, go ahead. Okay, the Diaspora Commission. Diaspora Commission, we're working very hard on it. Um, and most of the things we're doing today is essentially targeted towards, you know, getting our diaspora to invest. And I want to thank, thank most, uh, a lot of them because they're doing fantastically well. Um, just this Christmas alone, the city is full. Flights are full. Hotels are full. I'm filled by who? Tourism. By, by the diaspora population. Yeah. So we are working with, and you know, say, look, how do you set up a diaspora commission? It has to be driven by technology. And we're working with, we, 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 we're working on the base technology and also on the data. Because what do, what do people in the diaspora want to see? They want news about home. They want opportunities about what's going on at home. They want to be able to send money home seamlessly, you know, without. They want to be able to buy properties. They want to be able to pay school fees for, you know. Yeah. And so we don't, it's not enough to just say, oh, we have a diaspora commission. Okay. You must have an engine that drives the relationship between home and diaspora. Right, let, okay. Let's look at, just a moment, let's look at uh, some of the comments. questions and comments that are coming forth in the course of this interactive session. Uh, we have this one. It says, Edo is one of the first states to implement the tax credit scheme. What has been the gains of the program? Um, it has helped us to increase investments into infrastructure. For instance, we have two individuals, right, who, because the amount of tax they pay, right, they can use that tax, they get the rebates, and use the tax to build roads, to build. So that road, for instance, from Sapele Road to the ethanol plant is based on the tax credit of one of the investors. Okay. 
we have uh, this question. It says, uh, I think we've looked at this question yeah. before. I could just flip yeah. up. Okay. Uh, Your Excellency, you have just ruled out the tax waiver scheme for workers earning below the minimum wage. No, not workers. Okay. Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. <laughs> What's the rationale behind this and what is the expected impact? Um, you don't, you, you, you're asking people to, to, to increase productivity, right? Somebody who is earning less than 40,000 naira today, you know, a cobbler, a organizer, a pure water seller. Pure water seller. I mean, that's it's unfair. It's not right. You know, that's putting that tax burden doesn't even help them, you know. Do, do well. It begins to lead to tax avoidance, the cost of even trying the cost of even trying to collect, you know. Uh, there are other ways to get taxes, you know, if you wanted to. Uh, I mean so so we're saying let's also encourage the small businesses, people with small businesses to strive. When they get bigger, when they're doing well, you then now say, okay, okay. pay me a bit more. All right. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Well, you see, the, the last question when I want to ask me this. When are they come for Rodeos now? You know, stand up with Richie. I call the watch through my phone. When I begin to talk about politics and government being involved or whether in August or whatever. And you see, I never see where a serving governor where the worker come out that will get some level of percentage to choose his successor. You know when governor say never get, you know, get. Uh, you say not get. I never. Yeah. Not get. When they come back to that place, I need to ask question. Mr. Governor, sir, you say you not get anointed, anointed candidates at, yeah, at this time. presently. Mm. Primary and February. And they look everybody. Everybody. Maybe, maybe you'll get mm. later. And they look everybody. And they ask a question. Mm. Mm. Primary in February. Mm. That's next month because mm. tomorrow don't finish, which is next month. Mm. And mm. your working relationship with your party people mm. now it will determine you bringing out somebody or supporting anybody. Mm. But you know if you try and give them, say, make you go bring somebody come for me. Because what you put for ground, and the party people, you know the interests of politicians, it might be different from the interests of some areas where you understand. And the brief person come for you, and you know they line with how to sustain what you don't put for ground, you go support. I'm not saying my party people be like that. My party people won't win election. And they don't go, and they get sense. Many of them, when they go out now, they, they thank them, say, ah, on a, your party, on a, your, on a party they do well, on a party they do well. Even then, and they tell me, say, ah, uh, governor, we would like make the successor continue because it just will make election easy. Because when you go out now, we say, this now waiting our government to do, this now waiting our government to do, election not they had again. So many of my party people, I think they aligned. Also, don't forget, oh, the reason why I know if you just say, now nah, this person I want. You see, nobody may get at those states. Nobody only made the government. They get many issues when you go balance. For instance, they say, okay, eh, we already do politics, but make a do, make, we, go, we go zone. Some party, our party, if you say, we don't go zone, or we go zone. Another party says, we go zone. So, we they look at how the whole political landscape did. Okay. Not be now, you will just say, not this person. Oh, yeah, and then you start the fight. Okay, let's take this question from uh, some of the feedbacks we are getting. Uh, there was a recent report on capital importation. Edo State ranked low. What do you think of this? And from your privileged uh, viewpoint, what has been the level of foreign direct investment into Edo State? Well, sometimes, when I, that's why I say I try not to focus on some of these numbers because you, know, you don't know where they're coming from and the basis on which they've... When I sit here and I'm seeing investments, right? I'm seeing, just take real estate for instance. See the amount of investments that have come into real estate. Mm -hmm. There's no road we open up before you know what they've sold up all the land and it is. So where is that coming from? Is it from inside or from outside? From inside. I mean, I'm seeing, I, I, I mean, most times now, I can't even travel with my full complement of staff because all the flights are sold out, coming in. What are these people coming to do? Are they not coming with money? So when you tell me that employee investment is low, I say, okay, if it is low with all of these people coming in, with all of these investments in real estate, when it becomes high, I wonder what this place would look like. It would be like Eldorado. 
Okay. Well, let's uh, quickly uh, look at this question. It says, compliments of the season, Your Excellency. What's your, Your Excellency doing to ensure that you take advantage of your ESO program? Yes. Um, what we're doing, we're talking to the investors, you know, to say, look, we must have a very robust outgrower program or smallholder program where from the lots, the land we've given them, we must now cut out areas and give people. So if you want to invest in five hectares of oil palm in Oliwa, you can come, for instance, and you'll be given that allotment. And the main holder will help you, give you good seedlings, you know, help you access to finance, and buy back from you what you have, you know, you, you, you have grown. And why would it do it? Because you may just be a, a much more efficient um, grower than they are. So yes, we are encouraging young people. It is not encouraging monoculture, which many environmentalists are saying uh, discourages diversity and creates environmental challenges. No, what we've done, you know, if you don't forget that, the land we are given and lands that have been degraded, that have been deforested, and will take a long, we may not be able to grow back that level of forest, but we need to have green cover. So. Yes. Um, we, we yes, one last one, um, Your Excellency. You have done so well in giving palliatives to a do light uh, by way of free buses and all that. I was looking forward to any form of palliative again, uh, just maybe before the elections. Well, I, I think the biggest palliative is to put in place systems that will help people produce, because that's more sustainable. Okay? We're putting palliatives because of the shocks that people didn't expect. But once it's, things stabilize, you want to do more to encourage people to produce and stand on their feet and not just say giving Give them that. Fish. All right, Tony, right. I know your question. What's, what's, your, what's your legacy? It's politics, economy, governance. And because there's some who say, oh, His Excellency, his, his style of politics is a bit disruptive from the APC into the PDP, and now we're going into an election here. On the final, maybe in, one minute. In terms of the politics, I think my legacy is that, look, you know what? Politics, the kind of politics that needs to, that doesn't su support development, is bad politics. You know, it cannot be politics for the politicians alone. The politicians are politics for the people. So any politics that just focuses on just sharing amongst the people who are in their in office is not even. So I, have just, I believe that my legacy will be that, you know what? More, you know, the politics will begin to play going forward. Uh, but there's politics involving fair distribution of uh, resources, politics that encourage people to invest and grow wealth for the benefit of. Uh, in terms of the economy, I think the, 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 the results are out there. You know, we've set the basis, the foundation for a major, major industrial and commercial growth of Edo State. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Edo State Governor. Godwin Nogegase of Basic. It's been a very, very uh, exciting moment here uh, having this conversation with you. And we hope to have this privilege again to engage you as we move progress, particularly as we move towards the 2024 election. I want to say big thanks to all my colleagues here. Oh, yeah, from Edo Broadcasting Service. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. And it's also a rare privilege having His Excellency on the same state with us. Okay, and of course, uh, Nusa. Uh, from Sonny Duke, thank you very much. And Mr. Governor, thank you very much. I will speak correct English for this one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. We thank also you. want to say big thanks to uh, Big Madame. Yeah, let me put it that way. Uh, Ameza Igebo. She's backstage now, and uh, I think she's very satisfied with what we've done here today and the investment in me particularly. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, last word? Thank you, Sonny. I'm really, really grateful to all Edo people for the support I've received these last seven years. I'm very, very excited. Um, I'm glad with what we have achieved as a state. I was um, at the Victor Rival Creative Hub last night to watch Charlie Poppy. I mean, looking at those kids there last night, wow. I felt fulfilled. Interesting. That these kids, there? yes, these wow. kids are not looking at talking about traveling anymore. They're now home expressing Engaged. their creative instincts. Mm. Thank you very much. That's where we call it a wrap on this special interactive session. Thank you, everyone, for making this a huge success. And to you watching at home, thank you for staying with us. Happy New Year in advance.
and bye for now. Now we don't hear from the Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki. Let us know what you think. For comment section, if you never subscribed to Dan ARG YouTube, try make you subscribe so that make you for the hear all the things where they happen for Nigeria. Make I leave you with this video. Make you help us share. Thank you for watching Dan ARG YouTube.